In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over why looking at your pH values that you get back with your soil test report is so important. All right, let's look at pH values importance in a soil test report. So first off, pH is the most important, and it's I know it's always hard to put something as the most important, but when in doubt, I would say looking at your pH is definitely very high, if not the most important. Why? Because it impacts many plant and nutrient aspects. If the pH is way off from your target levels, the rest is much less important because when the pH is adjusted, this can impact the availability of other nutrients. Remember, a soil test est estimates the plant available nutrients not the total nutrients. And this is just a kind of a little graphical representation that if we just look at nitrogen here as an example, pH around seven, uh, pretty much that, and generally that 6.5 to kind of that little over seven, all in the green range, very available. As we get more acidic or more basic from that, we can see that the availability of that particular nutrient will decrease. So this is why pH is very important, because if our pH comes back very low, 5.5, our phosphorus or potassium or sulfur might be less plant available and show up as less on a soil test, because remember, a soil test is estimating the plant available nutrients, not the total nutrients. So what is pH, just in the general sense? You know, we talk about this um, number that, is, that shows up, it's a decimal. You know, how does that kind of relate to um, you know, the, what's going on in the soil? Uh, what does that number kind of represent? And what pH is, we may be familiar with that pH scale, it's a measure of the soil's acidity. It's a range from one to 14, with seven being neutral, representing pure water. pH values below seven, you can see here and below, are considered to be acidic, while those above are considered to be alkaline. The pH of a soil is not only affects the availability of necessary plant nutrients, but also the solubility of potential toxic ele elements such as aluminum and lead. This is another reason why it's important to know the pH value of your soil. Now we want to follow the lab recommendations. So here we see a soil report and they will often offer lab recommendations as far as amount of limestone or sulfur to be adding. And the soil lab you select will know not only the pH of your sample, but also if they're uh, offering recommendations, they will calculate the buffer capacity, which a buffer is simply resistance to pH change in relation to your soil type. Utilizing all these factors will help produce a good starting point for correcting your soil's pH if it does need to be corrected. Remember though that the lab is only as good as the sample you provide them, so make sure it is a representative sample of the entire growing area, not just a single site to ensure the pH adjustment will maximize plant for performance over the entire field. And again, follow the lab recommendations here. They offer a great starting point, and you could see over time how that field, how that soil may react. Sometimes you make a, a pH correction and it will stay for a number of years. Other times you need to constantly uh, retest your soil and remaking adjustments because some, for whatever reason, shift from where your target or ideal range would be.